In this section, I'm briefly going to talk about the concepts of lift and drag. So, an aeroplane is a good um, class example to talk about this because um, we've got all the forces acting on this. So, if you think about um, what's happening with an aeroplane, we've got um, some forces the weight of the aircraft trying to obviously pull it down to the ground. But to counteract that, we've got a lift force which is produced by the wings, which is um, counteracting that and keeping it in the air. We have thrust which is produced by the engines which propels the um, aircraft forward but um, opposing that there is a drag force and um, obviously thrust is a larger force so it moves um, the plane forward but we'll talk about how these um, drag and lift forces um, are created but in quite a high level uh, way. So lift is um, a force that's perpendicular to the flow so you can see a little animation here on the right hand side see the airflow is going from left to right and in the centre you see um, an aerofoil profile um, which is slowly being angled at a greater angle relative to the flow. So the lift that's being produced by this um, uh, aerofoil here and say is perpendicular to the flow. So if the flow is going from left to right horizontally then the lift force would be um, vertically going up. And aircraft wings are shaped um, in this sort of characteristic shape such that the, the air that goes over the top of the um, the aerofoil or the, the wing is traveling faster than the air that goes underneath the wing and that creates lift and the way it does that is if we consider Bernoulli's if we say that the change in elevation between the top and the bottom is um, negligible um, so we can cancel those two terms from Bernoulli's and we can write Bernoulli's like this so with our static pressure plus our dynamic pressure is equal to static, um, static pressure at two and um, dynamic pressure too. So if the pressure, say, at point two of the top of the wing is moving faster and it's moving slow on the bottom wing, then it means that um, P2 must be lower than P1. And therefore we've got a pressure differential across the wing. The top pressure, static pressure at the top is lower than the static pressure at the bottom. So that creates a net force lifting it up and that's what creates uh, the lift. Um, and you, as I said, you can see in this animation here that the wing is kind of angling um, to a greater degrees um, relative to the flow coming into it. And this creates, uh, this is speeding the up, air up more over the top of the wing. So this is going to create more and more lift. However, you can't keep doing that indefinitely for um, aircraft. So eventually you reach a point where um, the angle of attack, which is what this angle relative to the flow is called, where the angle attack is so large that the airflow separates from the top of the wing, um, breaks this kind of effect and um, the drag reduces and if that was a plane it would uh, drop um, quite severely. Okay, so um, in the way that um, lift was a force that was perpendicular to the flow, then drag is a force that's parallel to the flow. And drag can be created in a number of ways. Um, however, the main two that I'm just going to talk about in this lecture is skin drag and form drag. And skin drag is due to the friction of the air molecules going along the surface of the um, the body, whether it's an aircraft or a vehicle or whatever. And as I say, it's on the surface, you've got um, the vehicle kind of travelling and the air's um, stationary, so you have that kind of um, almost fr frictional effect where the air is trying to speed up or keep and you know stay at the same velocity as the surface of the body and there's this frictional effects as we saw to as we um, discussed when we we're looking at laminar pipe flow um, which is sort of a function of the which is linked sort of to the viscosity of the um, uh, the fluid form drag is kind of slightly different and this is due to kind of pressure changes caused by the body so as the air flows around the body as the air kind of um, uh, comes to the, the the rear of the body with let's use the car for example as it comes off the back of the car then there's normally wakes or kind of low pressure regions that are created at the back of the vehicle and because this of this high pressure region that's caused um, this at the back of the vehicle we have the stagnation pressure on the front of the vehicle so it causes a pressure difference so you have higher pressure at the front and lower pressure at the back which causes net force pulling the vehicle back and that can kind of be seen in these um, kind of plots here so if you look at this plate here which is kind of angled 
relative to the flow then the flow is coming in you're getting stagnation pressure here lower pressure on the back and this is get a pressure difference which is the net force to be pulling it back which is caused now form drag and what's interesting here is that there's lots of different shapes going from a very very streamlined um, object down here and as we go up the page becoming less and less streamlined and you can see the sort of percentage um, how that shifts from um, skin drag to the form drag now just point out the the at total drag force of these objects will be very different obviously this will have a higher drag force than this but this is just talking about the relative percentage between the two types of drag so you can see that this very thin plate which is um, parallel to the flow has next to no form drag because um, it's not really creating a wake in the flow but it has so therefore the drag will be made up almost entirely of the skin drag this shape is still streamlined but it's going to have some um, small percentage of form drag then as the object becomes less aerodynamic um, then there's going to the percentage of form drag is going to increase and the percentage of um, skin drag will decrease so this is how the two drag lift and drag forces are calculated so the um, lift forces and we talked about how these were derived um, back on the lecture when we looked at dimensional analysis um, so the lift force is equal to a half um, the fluid density times the area times the lift coefficient times velocity squared. It should be noticed that the velocity here is the relative velocity between the fluid flow and the object. And the drag um, force is exactly the same equation, but instead of using the lift um, coefficient, it uses a, a drag coefficient. So just a quick word on sort of how um, this impacts real life. If we look at how... Um, cars have evolved over the years um, then if we look back to the kind of 1920s then the types of vehicles that are being produced then were very kind of blocky and if these can be sort of analogous to some sort of plate with very high um, drag coefficients so around 0 0.6 0 0.8 but as the the need for um, more fuel efficient cars have um, as that need has grown um, the shape of them have changed to kind of try and um, uh, take advantage of a lower um, amount of drag that's been caused and higher fuel efficiency. So you can see as time has gone on the shape's been approximated from a, a plate to a cylinder to an oval in more recent years. So just one final thing whilst we're talking about vehicles, um, just which of these um, two devices, so you can see there's um, an element on the back of this car and an element of on the back of this car which of these do you think um, do these put either generate lift or drag so just pause the video just to have a think about that so the answer is is that um, this um, wing on the back of this race car here um, produces lift or downforce because it's negative lift so it's basically an upside down aircraft wing so as the flow flows over this um, it creates lift but in the downwards direction which creates a force which helps to um, push these tyres onto the road to um, improve the performance and lap time of the vehicle. Now you might think of this created lift, in fact it doesn't. This is a uh, spoiler, this is to reduce drag. So it's, you can see it's not really shaped like an aircraft uh, wing, it doesn't have that characteristic shape and it's almost parallel to the flow itself. But what the um, purpose of this is, is as the flow um, of air, as the air flows over the car, or rather as the car moves through the air, I should say, then it's to control the weight coming off the back of the car by controlling the, the weight that's formed behind the cars, and that's what this device is trying to do. If it can create the weight that, or minimise the weight that's created behind the car, then if it minimises the weight, it minimises the form drag that's been, um, that, that's um, the form drag on this car, and therefore reduce the drag and um, increase its speed or um, increase its fuel efficiency. Okay, so that concludes this lecture. Thanks for listening.